look at what has come outside the, my gate like um they are outside the gate i went out i just drove off to go get something from the supermarket and then i came outside the gate look at what i saw like they say they are hungry that they need food they need help just look at just look at everybody here they say they are hungry that they need food outside my gate in my estate there are so many people outside here oh my god hmm. it's going to be crazy it's going to be tough this time around believe me it's going to be very 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 tough just look at look at the other people look at them okay so uh, that footage actually brings us to the studio and uh, uh we said let us know what's happening is it the same kind of uh, atmosphere that you have in your community uh where people have now started moving to other homes where they think okay these people could be living below average we can get some drop from their table to eat and that is why the insecurity we have on the daily is not a misfit it's actually in tandem with the situation let's come to the studio uh myself sandra and tolu will be looking at the matter here and of course uh, do join us from home uh feel free to call the line as we even take the conversation further sandra? okay so um we'll take that of security um before we now move on to the phone call because one has um uh to just mm -hmm. few questions mm -hmm. you have a little bit of uh closeness to the slums because of mm -hmm. the kind of projects you do mm -hmm. uh they are jiggles but now it has gone round agege yanopaja mention it ogba everywhere so please we'll have that footage on the screen while this conversation continues what, what, what do you think first of all about the situation you've talked about nigerian police not being on the road mm -hmm. somebody did a start about the number of nigerian police we have uh in relation to 200 million people mm -hmm. and i think that's why states have taken initiative to start creating their own um security outfits. yeah local security yes yeah. yeah uh i mean so it's um it, it's a funny mix because um, in terms of security Particularly Lagos State is 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 large, right? Uh, I am not sure the Nigerian police will be enough to even cover this um, to cover this volume, right? So that's even the first one. Now, these other um, these other areas. I mean, so the areas you've mentioned, we call them underserved communities. These underserved communities are characterized by high population. So these people have like very very high population and they have um so how, how, how do i even say this um without without um tarnishing the the image of people they have very very low education so to say okay. now um someone just told me about somebody who went to withdraw all of his money from his house from from the bank to put in the house because he heard that the government will be paying people who have less than five thousand <laughs> in, the in, the, in their accounts so he went to withdraw all his money in, in one of these areas that were robbed. Went to withdraw all of the money, put in his house, and he was, I mean, the one his wife's accounts, they withdrew everything, yeah. and they were robbed of 234,000. Wow. Very wise, pound foolish there. Exactly. Okay, so let, let's do it this way. Let, let's, let's see if we can bring our, our U.S. guests into the conversation now. Uh, Jemima Chalks is an, uh, a media professional, and she is also a mother. So we'll just take some of her her experience what's happening in the u.s and how government is managing things then look at because she's in nigeria first before she actually uh moved moved on to the united states of america but she's going to be sharing with us as a media person what she has seen then we can start uh this conversation moving forward so uh please the technical crew if we can have jemima join us in the studio uh we'll be glad to start for want of time too we can take this conversation forward but so why they try to bring that up um the, the next one will be uh MSMEs that we're going to be focusing on today. Please note what you want to share because opportunities are out, actually there, uh, but we figure that some people don't even know about it. Mm -hmm. the, the whole COVID-19 era is beginning to overwhelm us. Mm -hmm. So I need you to get ready for that. Let's see if we can start conversation with Jemima Chucks. Jemima, if you can hear us. Thank you so much, Super Screen. Thank you. 
Okay, so um, thanks for actually joining us uh, from Delaware. Let, let, let's, let's get your thought about the very first one. Um, how government responded um, with the whole COVID-19 over there and uh, people's responsiveness as well in the United States of America. Please share with us. You know, for me, um, I think that the United States government did a very good job in um, responding to the coronavirus <laughs> as soon as, you know, they were able to. Um, of course, we hear about all this infection going around all over the world, but um, a pandemic like this would, you know, you can't really predict a pandemic. We just, you just cannot say that it's going to be this magnitude or it's just going to be less, you know what I mean? Um, because just like every other, you know, enemy, just like an invisible enemy, just like Donald Trump said, is an invisible enemy. The pandemic is like, the coronavirus is like an invisible enemy that just hates you and you just cannot find or identify where these bullets are coming from, where the weapon is coming from, but you just find yourself being hit from all sides. So it's just something that we'll do with, uh, you know, more of collective efforts. Of course, we don't have eyes at the back of our heads. And that's why we all have to take care of each other. I think the United States did a good job. Um, for the people of the United States, did they um, respond? Well, I mean, we're humans and people don't really take things seriously until they see bodies dropping. I think that here in the United States, a lot of people did not take this seriously until it began to affect them until it got home. I, I remember um, someone, you know, telling me, oh, well, coronavirus is not in Delaware. So they didn't really pay attention, even though they heard that people were dying in the, you know, in New York, it was not really hitting them until it got here. And then, you know, they heard about someone dying in Delaware and everyone freaked out. I feel like people here in the United States, just like all over the world, um, it's hard for human beings in general to take a pandemic seriously until it kind of hits someone very close to them. And unfortunately, I, I think that's human nature. Of course, everyone is not like that. I, I think um, the people here in the United States, um, you know, did not expect this magnitude of impact or loss of you know lives for this pandemic and um it's it's pretty much a disaster going on but you know we are you know we're getting over it we are we're actually staying strong and supporting each other right now okay thank you so i would like to know how impactful would you, you would like to rate government's palliative as mentioned in the media over there well government um palliative care you know, as mentioned in the media, for this United States, I think it's um, it's great. They're doing a pretty good job by um, sensitizing the people and explaining to them the importance of social distancing, especially um, when someone has tested positive to COVID-19 and there's actually no vaccine available for, for that. It's no cure. And um, it's just that the, the person would have to fight by themselves and the immune system will eventually overcome for those that have survived it and um, for the government all the government is doing is actually making sure that the hospitals implement policies to protect um, the people for instance I had a case where someone um, you know that a very close friend of mine was sick and you know was taken to the hospital and uh, when the family got there uh, at the emergency um, ward to the, the patient and they asked the family to go home they were not allowed into the hospital because they wanted to protect the family because they had a whole lot of uh, COVID-19 cases right at the hospital um, the tendency that the family members will be infected it doesn't mean that the, the, this particular um, family member that's sick has COVID-19 no but it's just a fact that while the family's in a hospital they could get infected you know so they had them leave and so they took care of this patient and she tested negative and they discharged her right away as soon as you know she was feeling better and they gave her medicines to go home because you know there was not a much, much space in the hospital to keep someone negative so basically i think the government is really working hard um you know to administer good information about palliative care to 
um, the people are you know social distancing is something that they sing every day and wash your hands and you know teach all this important stuff and I think the people are really um, paying attention to what has been your new lessons learned from your family during this lockdown now look at it from a mother's perspective, perspective. yes what are the what are the new things you've learned Economic stimulus is uh, a package that the government puts together, you know, to stimulate the economy or I'll say a package the government puts together to help the economy not to fall or to flop. Basically, what that means is, is a number of spending, a huge, you know, in the most spending that the government does. Um, financially um, and they do this by lowering taxes they also do this by you know um, you know giving huge discounts that way it, it, it kind of helps the country not to fall into a recession for a country like the United States and other countries all over the world with the pandemic hitting economies of this country the best thing they can do is to roll out the economic stimulus package to help their economy not to flop because when a recession happens is it, it just is a mess that goes on in every country and um, here in the United States we were fully informed and and the government has gone ahead to um, you know dish out over two trillion dollars to its citizens and uh, this is the money that each household is going to get and i will tell you this week a lot of us got the money i got you know some money from the government which is really very impressive i mean a very good amount of money and a lot of people that i know got theirs as well and this also helps families you know to come out of 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 you know the poverty or come out of the lack of course a lot of people have bills that they're paying as well um, the banks are also um, implementing this discount because the government is working hand in hand with banks to offer discounts or to offer uh, support for people that have mortgages that cannot pay their mortgage. The banks are holding off, you know, charging and, uh, you know, excess charge and all that stuff for the past, you know, for like three months. I know starting from March and up until July, a couple of banks have actually you know stop taking mortgages from people and that way families can you know grow together and just be together and go through this hard time of pandemic i think the united states has done pretty much a good job in sensitizing its citizens and as for nigeria i also hear that uh, a lot of money has been pumped as well to the people which is amazing it's a way of um, the government of nigeria trying to also um, hold the economy together so it doesn't fall apart. So I think the governments are doing a pretty good job letting the people know and it's something that we all have to watch, you know, work together just like as I'm explaining it to you the, the best of my understanding and, and other people explain as well. So I, I think it's both ways. The government can only do so much and the people just have to respond positively. Can you please tell us um, access to the market amidst social distancing and precautions in the U.S.? Access to the market. Uh, well, access to the market have, um, that's arrangement. really important because if you are having a lockdown in a pandemic situation like the coronavirus lockdown, people need food. People need to buy food. They need to be able to get their medicine. So here in the United States, we have a huge population over over 300 million people here in the United States. Of course, that's a lot of people that need medicines and their food. Some people are, um, they are medications. And so the pharmacies are open. Um, the grocery stores are open and for people to be able to buy food. And in the grocery stores, there are max lines like a um, couple of feet away from each other. So if you are, you know, in the teller, you want to pay. There are a couple of feet that you're supposed to observe, you know, not getting too close to the other people. It's social distancing, basically. And they have hand sanitizers and they have wipes. They have bleach wipes and they have, you know, all kinds of um, disinfectants for people to make use of. And the United States, um, the CDC has encouraged people to wear masks when they're going to the public. So when you're going to the public, you're encouraged to put on a mask. So when you get to the stores, you see everyone is wearing a mask to protect themselves and protect their 
neighbors. So I think the United States has done a good job. They've done a pretty good job in you know sensitizing the people about social distancing. And so the stores are open and the pharmacies are open for people to pick up stuff. Uh, you know things that they need daily needs and you know without getting infected and the people are also fully aware that it's important that they protect themselves and and, and, and other people and it's important to do that because some people are symptomatic of course you know they they have the virus but they have no symptoms and the fact that you have the virus and you don't show symptoms doesn't mean that you you, you know you can you know infect other people and you know they don't get sick of course you can infect someone that their immune system is compromised and they get sick and that's why social distancing is important and for people to cooperate and not be selfish yeah so it's important that we cannot overemphasize that um, daily or continuous sensitization on coronavirus is, is really important. So government should not just relax that people know COVID-19, mm -hmm. they should continue to, to sensitize the public about it. Mm -hmm. So further, I'd like to ask, um, to what extent do your children really understand what COVID-19 mm -hmm. is? Very important. Well, uh, children, children are yeah, Because we adults, they don't really pay attention. <laughs> children are great blessings. For every family, my children um, understand very well what COVID-19 is. They understand that uh, we are, you know, going through a pandemic, you know, season right now. And um, the schools here did a very good job informing this, you know, children about coronavirus, even before the lockdown. I remember the kids coming home two weeks to uh, <laughs> the lockdown before the school shutdown. What I mean is they were explaining to me, hey, mom, have you heard about coronavirus? And they were teaching me actually what coronavirus is. <laughs> And, you know, I, I've been praying and teaching them. They already know about washing their hands and things like that. But I didn't want to scare them until, you know, um, you know, we were still trying to process what's going on with this virus. And I was already telling them, hey, make sure you wash your hand every time you use the bathroom. Make sure you don't put your hand in your nose or, you know, make sure your hands are always clean. And um, so when the school, you know, explained it to them, and they did a couple of, you know, they have ways to teach children. And my my daughter, my daughter came home, and my son, and they were trying to teach me and my husband. It was really amazing. So the kids understand what what's going on. They do, and we let them watch news for them to see what's really happening. And, you know, during our morning prayers and night prayers, you know. They pray for the people suffering and right now in the hospitals. And last night I heard my son praying for someone, you know, in the hospital. And I heard my daughter also praying for the families that lost family, you know, lost a loved one. It's really amazing. So my kids are pretty much aware of the pandemic and they're cautious when they, you know, you know, even when my husband comes back, his trips outside the house. So they understand not to go hug him or touch him till he takes a shower and comes to us and everything, you know, sort it out. So they understand very much. And I think every mom out there should also sensitize their kids and protect their family by social distancing and doing the, the needful. Yes. They should sensitize their children about coronavirus. So if you if you if you know about it, your children don't know about it. I think it won't work. So we should yeah, actually play our own part. Yeah. yeah. So um, further into our conversations, I'd like to ask: Hunger is actually is currently taking over the fear of COVID nineteen. Are we even taking um, more of the COVID nineteen fear? We're not looking at COVID nineteen. We're not looking at hunger. So I like I like you to tell us how can we individuals complement government efforts to make sure that we fight this COVID-19. I'm talking about humanitarian intervention. What can we do? I think hunger kills more people in the world than any pandemic would ever do all over the world. And, you know, countries that are impoverished, countries that, um, you know, there are lots of hungry people everywhere. And it's unfortunate that um, people don't, you know see hunger as a pandemic itself so we're actually living through a pandemic not just coronavirus and it's a hunger pandemic that's what i call it and um of course coronavirus is is killing people but the harbor 
how how will the people alive survive without food so um it's it's really really a challenging time for the world not just the united states but people in nigeria i i worry so much about people in nigeria because of the hunger and it's a lot going on uh with people in nigeria so and it's amazing to see that people are coming together to support each other here in the united states a lot of humanitarian organizations um like our organization church life international and we've been um, doing pretty much to support our communities and we have extended the support to to africa to nigeria and we are supporting a couple of people we started um you know so a support you know some parts of lagos and we did a support around ilobo area uh look what area is after okoko towards um Ibede area a jungbadi area yeah so that's where we've been working on pretty much and we are extending that um to other parts of nigeria as well um, we're looking at also supporting the eastern part and the north and you know the south and southeast and all the areas that we can cover as you know cherished life is willing to support and i also i think it's amazing that our humanitarian organizations are standing up to support one another in at this time so it's critical that human beings come together to support the government because this is just so much on the government right now government has a lot of responsibility but feeding the people at this time is a lot so individuals that are well to do support your neighbor i mean if you cook check on your neighbor if you have a lot to eat um if your neighbor has a lot to eat get out on the street there's someone out there that is literally looking up to the sky and and just just praying that she find he or she finds something to eat so it's important that we all support each other and i just want to thank every other organization um that is really really working hard to you know stop the hunger so okay you know yeah, something that we shouldn't put all the burden on our government government this government that let us also try and show love do the little you can do i do my own quota you do your own quota he does his own he will go a long way no, so you have to do something yeah because uh, <laughs> you, you will go a long way okay. so i like to ask as a wife and a mother okay what can you do actually to assist other mothers out there that cannot even afford a cup of rice at, at this time mm. um as a mom as a wife and um, you know, as uh, an entrepreneur, I love to support other women. I love to support women. Uh, we have women empowerment. Church Life International is an organization that's passionate about empowering other people, empowering uh, impoverished communities, em empowering widows, empowering women, and empowering young people and um, and children. So we reach out to. You know the less privileged we reach out to you know to support all government and all the organizations to you know express the love of jesus to people and in this season yes as a wife i will definitely um you know support anyone in need and through our organization we have directors all over the world for nigeria we have a director and for lagos we have a director and her name is favor and um, you can reach her on the number on your screen uh, right now displaying on the screen so just you know text on whatsapp that number and just say hey text i have no food if you have no food and she can um you know as a director she's passionate about you know making sure that you get something to eat and if you need financial support for your family text that number and you know that will be provided made available through cherish life international although i'm here in the united states i'm a co-founder of cherish life international which is a ministry and also a non-for-profit organization that supports you know the less privileged so we are super excited to empower all the women hey reach out to me my name is jemima chucks i'll be super excited and reach out to my organization right in the whole information on the screen and right, okay so for us to close this conversation yes. it will be important mm -hmm. to know uh, your fear uh covid 19 is something we cannot see this is where it's going to end mm -hmm. but if it persists what will be your fear just before we go my fears about coronavirus continuing you know and continuing and extending past are uh, the predicted number of days um, that we are all 
looking forward to is just the fact that more people will be hungry <laughs> that's just my fear um i'm not worried that um it is happening right now because i know that we're going to be okay um i i i have no fear that this too shall pass i do not have fear i believe that coronavirus would just be sometime a story that we will tell it would just be part of history but uh, what we do while it's happening right now is what's more important you know how do we support each other how do we adhere to social distancing or what the CDC um, tells you or what the, the government officials, the health professionals tell you to stay away, you know, so you don't get the infection, disease. It's terrible, but I will, I'm only worried that people are going to get more hungry, especially, you know, poor countries, especially um, Nigeria, where i i'm being interviewed i i just feel that a lot of nigerians are gonna go through you know so much poverty and so much starvation a lot of people are gonna die out of hunger not even the virus the virus might not even get to them but hunger might kill them i'm worried about you know crime crime getting worse in Nigeria because you know people when they're hungry they can do anything to eat and that could lead to breaking stores breaking into stores and just you know breaking into people's homes to steal and all kinds of crimes and that's just what I'm worried about I'm not even worried about the COVID-19 because I believe that together when we all come together as human beings we can overcome this virus but I just worry that you know we don't realize that hunger is the real enemy in contention right now Church Life International as, um, as an organization we are here to help Jemima, to just just pick up quickly from any any part of what she said that resonates with the situation we have on ground so we can continue this conversation okay i mean the the one of uh, the key point that i took from what she said is that hunger might just increase and that's like the biggest fear that we're having right so it's it's from both ends of our conversation this morning um from the sme side and from the family side 